Frederick Ronald Kearns. His determination and dedication to the aerospace industry transformed Canadair into an internationally recognized and highly regarded manufacturer of commercial and military aircraft with great benefits for Canada's economy. Frederick Ronald Kearns was born on March 11, 1924 in Quillon, Quebec, the sixth of 12 children. He joined the RCAF in August 1942, one of five brothers to serve in the armed forces. As part of 443 Squadron in Europe, he was flying Spitfires by age 20. He flew 140 operational sorties in nine months, serving with distinction. After the war, he attended McGill University's School of Commerce. He continued to serve with the RCAF on weekends as a Vampire Jet Pilot with 401 City of Westmount Auxiliary Squadron. He married Beth Black in 1948 and they raised five children. Fred Kearns joined Canadair in 1949 as a timekeeper starting at $50 a week. He worked his way up in accounting to become vice president and comptroller in 1957, and in 1965, at age 41, he was made president and CEO. Canadair hosted visits from many dignitaries, including His Royal Highness Prince Philip, in 1951. Canadair co-workers describe Kearns as a tremendous visionary, the person who provided most of the drive at the company. Combining his fighter pilot's keenness and determination with his training as an accountant, he helped establish Canadair as a world-class aircraft design and manufacturing firm. While president, he oversaw a number of key projects, including the CL-84 Dynavert, the CL-41 Trainer, and the CL-215 Water Bomber. The water bomber is one example of a unique product that would not have existed but for Kern's strong determination to get approval for the project from Canadair's U.S. parent company, General Dynamics. The water bomber is a worldwide success and is still being manufactured. The aerospace industry was experiencing tough times through the late 1960s and 1970s. Canadair, owned by General Dynamics, had completed several substantial contracts to build parts for military aircraft after the war. But there were no large projects ahead. Kearns worked tirelessly to create revenue by bringing in subcontracts for manufacturing major components for Lockheed and Boeing. Despite these efforts, the company's sales declined dramatically. Canadair staff dropped from 10,000 in 1969 to below 2,000 by 1975. There were no new contracts on the horizon. In a speech to the Halifax Chamber of Commerce, Kearns said, It is my firm conviction that if we are to increase Canada's share of international trade, the two most important impediments we have to overcome are first, our Canadian lack of confidence or inferiority complex and second, our lack of marketing aggressiveness. But Kearns had confidence in his company. For over a year, he lobbied the federal government to buy Canadair from the U.S.-owned company and finally succeeded. The Canadian government bought Canadair early in 1976. Kearns identified a trend of healthy business jet sales and began to search for a viable business jet concept. He conferred with Bill Lear, famous for his Learjet series. Harry Halton, Canadair's top engineer, gave Kearns full support for the idea of a business jet. The Honorable Jean Chrétien authorized Canadair to begin designing the new business jet. They would go ahead. Fred Kearns made the biggest decision of his life when he ordered the Challenger into production. Engineers began designing the first wide-bodied business jet, state-of-the-art, with its widened fuselage and supercritical wing. It was the most exciting civilian aircraft program Canada had seen. The first prototype took off at Montreal in 1978, and testing of the CL-600 began. Certification of this groundbreaking new technology took longer than anticipated, 
It took nearly two years for the Challenger 600 to receive Canadian and U.S. approval. Modifications were called for, schedules delayed, and finances were severely strained by delays and interest rates which soared to 18%. Only Kern's extraordinary determination in the face of long odds and his belief in the people behind a great product kept the company going. He relied on the dedication and tireless efforts of people like Jim Taylor and Harry Halton, Dick Richmond, Peter Aird, and many other production, engineering, and flight test personnel to make this Canadian dream a reality. The Challenger, the last major project developed during Kern's tenure, is now a complete technical and financial success. Since the struggle of the early development days, the Challenger has now sold over 750 aircraft that still generates annual sales of over $680 million. The Challenger has spawned derivative aircraft such as the Regional Jet and the Challenger 601 series, which have sold an additional 1,800 aircraft. The 2,000 jobs at risk in 1975 were redirected into producing aircraft that are still in production more than 30 years later. The Canadian aerospace industry was transformed. Tens of thousands of new jobs were created at Canadair and in the new Canadian supply base that emerged. While others have helped from the outset and have since developed the products to their present level of excellence, in the end, it was the man with the dedication and faith in Canadian enterprise who made the realization of a dream possible. Because of this one man, Fred Kearns, Canada's aerospace industry can now justifiably assert that its jet transport products are the best and most technologically advanced in the world. Fred Kearns announced his retirement in June 1983 after 34 years of service. Canadair was later sold to Bombardier, but Kern's legacy continues. The original Challenger will always be known as the first business jet to fly faster, quieter, and farther than any of its competitors. Today, the Challenger 604 series is the world's best-selling jet in its class. Two of the most important aircraft in Fred Kern's life were the Challenger and Spitfire. When he was to be presented with his former squadron's standard in 1981, Kearns organized a Spitfire event in Montreal with actor Cliff Robertson's Spitfire. Many former World War II squadron pilots attended, making this a very memorable occasion for him. Also in 1981, he received the prestigious Cassie C.D. Howe Award. Kearns was a member of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and the Montreal Board of Trade. He served as director on several boards, including the Air Industries Association of Canada, the AIAC, the Canada-China Trade Council, and St. Mary's Hospital. He was an honorary director of Canada's Aviation Hall of Fame for several years. Fred Kearns' family was always important to him, and time spent with them was very special. He particularly enjoyed being with his grandchildren. He also enjoyed hunting and fishing and learned about winemaking. He enjoyed golfing with Beth and friends, and he found gardening to be especially relaxing. Fred Kearns died in London, Ontario on November 14, 1987, survived by Beth and five children, three of whom work in the aviation field, and 15 grandchildren. Frederick Ronald Kearns was inducted as a member of Canada's Aviation Hall of Fame at ceremonies in Toronto on May 28, 2008.